College football big game previews week number five. Our lines this week are coming to you from Samstown down in Tunica. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. TunicaTravel.com. The South's premier sports gambling destination. Go check them out. Uh, you can watch and wager on any of these games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six. Six means opening this weekend, this Friday, September 28th, 11 a.m., the Fitz Sportsbook. All the other ones, though, the Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot. We've been to all of them. They are fantastic. All of them are wonderful. Go check them out. TunicaTravel.com will give you everything you need to know. Go on and sign up for the Picks Contest over at WinningCuresEverything.com. This week, it is a two-night stay, along with a $100 dining ticket to uh, Twain Steakhouse and $50 free slot play to Samstown. We talking, we got your whole weekend lined up. So go sign up, winningcureseverything.com, get in the picks contest. I've had many a good meals at Twain's. Yeah. I and used I used to have a pretty good situation where I got comped pretty well at Samstown. <laughs> Back in the day. That was a long, that was a long time ago. That was that was early 20s. Back in the day. When I was real dumb. So, like we said, tunicatravel.com, go check them out. They got everything you need to know there. Uh, let's go on and jump in. Game number one, the biggest game of the weekend. Ohio State minus four at Penn State. Again, these lines are from Samstown this week. Happy Valley, man. The over-under is 70 and a half. It is at 6.30 p.m. on ABC at Beaver Stadium in Happy Valley, Pennsylvania. Look, this will be a tale of two halves. Ohio State likes to run up on people early. Penn State is averaging 35.5 points per game after halftime. They're averaging 21 points a game in the fourth quarter this year. Like, they appear to figure teams out, and then they they capitalize on them late. And that could make this game really interesting. It's, it's hard to gauge it's, this game just because, other than the TCU-Ohio State game, neither one of these teams have played anybody. Like they both got really good rankings, you know. They're you know they're top five in in points per game. Neither one of them are really good in points against. Yeah, they haven't played great defense, which is so weird because Ohio State is like up there with some of the best defensive talent in the country. Exactly, I, 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 just, I can't figure that out. I, I now I will say this: Penn State's defense only gives up 173 passing yards per game. Again, the teams that they've played, I don't know how much that says about them. But Ohio State quarterback Dwayne Haskins, look, he is averaging uh, – uh, no, he's he's 75.7% completion percentage say, on the no, year. 87 out of 115, 1,194 yards, 16 touchdowns, only one pick. Urban Meyer versus James Franklin has been fun. Like, it's a lot of fun. Penn State has only won one of these games since Franklin got there. But, look, 2014 – it was a 31-24 Ohio State win in, in double overtime. Like, there was a blowout in 2015. That was 38-10 to 10 OSU. 2016, Penn State wins at 24-21. Last year, Ohio State comes back and wins 39-38. I expect nothing but fireworks. Yep. Like I, I, Close game. I don't even want to bet on this game. Very end. Uh, I will tell you this. My metrics have this, like, Ohio State minus one. Yep. That's exactly what I was seeing. I, I am going to be betting on this. Now, it's not one of my gambling picks that I'm giving out later in the show, but but I'm absolutely going to have money on this. I and, can, I'm, and I'm going to be taking Penn State. I, I get the home that. team, and I think that the I think the line should be one, two, maybe a field goal, not four. Not four. Not, not four. four. Um, I will say this. The over-under is 70 and a half. Not touching it. It opened at 64 and a half. Like, it jumped almost a touchdown in, like, a day. So, yeah, that's the over-under, I probably wouldn't touch that one because I don't think either one of these defenses has really shown what they are capable of. Nick Bosa being out is is a big deal, and we don't know how long he's going to be out for Ohio State. Uh, but he made a difference on that defensive line. I don't know. Well, yeah, he's like, the best defensive player maybe in the country. Yeah, like a, he, he'll be a top five NFL draft pick. So I mean, there are people healthy. that think that he could be number one overall. Yeah. Uh, so so being without him against Penn State's offense, not good. Not good. But that's okay. It, it is what it is. You got any kind of pick? Uh, I would roll with Penn State. 
I'm going Penn State. I would roll with Penn State at home. They, they've they won, what, 17 but straight love, home games? I love James Franklin. I love betting on James Franklin, and I really like betting against Urban Meyer. It's not <laughs> smart. You lose a lot of money doing it, but I feel like I'm donating to a cause of Hey, you, you won goodwill. that TCU game by half a point. That's right. So, you you good? It's not lost, like Ohio lost, State covers every I lost spread. some Tulane money last week. You lost two oh on you bet Tulane against uh Man, I like Tulane. I like Tulane too, but like they, they hadn't looked very good this it year. It was thirty eight points. Well, it was it was thirty five. Whatever. It was it was a lot and they got beat by more. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move into game number two. Stanford at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a four and a half point favorite according to Samstown. Uh the over under is fifty four. Um Samstown doesn't have the over unders as of today, so we're using William Hill's lines. I think you can get those over at what, Hollywood? Yeah, Hollywood uh, is what I learned this weekend. Is yeah. William Hill is doing the book for Hollywood. All right, so uh, so over-under is 54 on this, 6.30 p.m. on NBC, same time as the Ohio State-Penn State game. So I'm, I'll have both televisions lined up. Uh, Saturday, September 29th, in South Bend, Notre Dame Stadium. Stanford is 4-0. They got some good wins. Look, going to Oregon and then to Notre Dame back-to-back is tough. Uh, Stanford is only averaging 104 rushing yards per game. It's only 3.7 yards per carry. Uh, but they are passing for 264 yards a game and 8.9 yards per pass attempt. Notre Dame quarterback Ian Book looks like the real deal, right? Now, he looked great against a terrible Wake Forest defense that was so bad that uh, that they fired their defensive coordinator, uh, Jay, uh, let's say, Salville? Sa- Salville? I don't, I don't even know how you say it. Um, he was 25 out of 34 for 325 yards. He accounted for five touchdowns against the Deacons. Uh, Notre Dame's pass defense, they're only giving up 5.6 yards per pass attempt. Will they be able to – they haven't played really good quarterbacks yet. So, will they be able to slow down K.J. Costello? Like, that's the question. Like, Stanford always finds ways to keep these kind of games close. And they demolished a good Notre Dame team last year, 38-20. But they are in South Bend this year. Um, you know, I, I doubt that Notre Dame looks ahead to Virginia Tech next week. But no, nah, they would they would be looking ahead for Wake Forest to this game more than yeah, they would look. Ahead I, of I agree. Tech. Um, I, if I had to take a side, I would go with Notre Dame minus four and a half. But the the metrics are right on the line. It's like Notre Dame minus four, Notre Dame minus five, and, and the fact that the line was like right on it, I'm like. Ah, even my numbers are like this is this is exactly what it's supposed to be. This will be in my gambling picks. Okay, all right, we'll we'll leave it at I that. I love one side of this. The over under, look, I it, neither defense has really been able to do anything. I might would go over the fifty four here. Stanford is one little one hundred twenty ninth in yards. Per game, in giving up yards per game. No, in 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 in, in yardage, more. yardage, offensive yardage. Yeah, offensive yardage. One twenty ninth. Wow, yards per game. Oh, you're right. Holy mackerel. Okay, yeah. They they have they have not. What they are doing is they're finding ways to get turnovers, a lot of special team stuff, and they are incredibly I got that from Yahoo, and I thought that is shocking. I thought that can't be right. And well everybody is shutting down Bryce Love. Bryce Love. That's right. It's not rushing yards. Like it's, it's, it's they're they're it's only like I said, they're only game. averaging 104 rushing yards a game. And I thought that is that is something that cannot be overlooked. Yeah, that's uh that's pretty insane. Yeah. Yards per game. Wow. So that is uh that's on out there. That's definitely on out there. Uh let's move on to game number 3. Big SEC battle. Florida at Mississippi State. It is the Dan Mullen Bowl, right? Dan Mullen leaves Mississippi State, goes to Florida. Look, two teams that have looked pretty good, uh, but were both embarrassed by Kentucky, which is weird to say, right? Uh, State is a a 7.5-point favorite at home. Uh, The over-under is 51. It's at 5 p.m. Saturday on ESPN at Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville. Florida's offense averages 6.67 yards per play. And that's even with the the Kentucky embarrassment. Uh, I mean, they had almost seven yards a a play against Kentucky. Still look pretty good. Um, Look, defense only gives up 4.87 yards per play. Mississippi State 
7.33 yards per play. And that's after last week when they did nothing against Kentucky. Uh, the defense gives up 4.22 yards per play. So it's two pretty good statistical teams. Two kind of not great quarterbacks, though. Like, as far as throwing the football, which is, is weird. Well, okay, uh, for throwing the football. Fitzgerald was seen as one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC for a while. Because of year. his because of his running ability, but, but yeah, because of his running ability. Well, um, the running ability when he can do that opens the passing lanes to where he can throw the ball fine. Right. Will Will Florida be able to stop him from running the football? Like that's and I think the fact that Dan Mullen knows exactly what he does well, like he will be able to slow that down. Uh, Felipe Franks fifty two point six percent completion percentage. He has thrown for twelve touchdowns and only one pick. And he's got one rushing touchdown. Yeah, but fifty percent. Like, I, yeah, that's I'm, bad. Oh, like, eight, eight. Just but because you got one. just wait, Fitzgerald, fifty-one point three percent completion percentage, four touchdowns passing, two picks. He's got five touchdowns rushing though. This is what I can't understand: is, is these are these guys are doing this. Florida has done this against nobody so far. I guess Kansas State's a pretty good team, and they mm. both played Kentucky as a common player. But if Kansas State's not a good team, then outside of Kentucky games where they both got their butt whipped, like I will say this: Florida looked them, a lot better against Kentucky than State did. They did get to play them at home. Yes, they did. So, so maybe we can throw that game out for both of them. They have played nobody, and they're still not good at statistically from the quarterback position. Yeah, no, that's, that's it. Yeah, N- neither friends, neither one. Is going to win a football Dan game for you. And Moorhead supposed to be like quarterback gurus and offensive geniuses. Dude, you can only work with what you got. Like Look, that's. Man, a, I, I think at some point in time, it's on the coach. It, it, you you got to put them in a position to to do something. But like, it, okay, fifty percent in college is garbage. Let's look at. I mean, that's bad. Let's go that, back and look at Notre bad Dame. Bad competition. Fifty percent is. Terrible. They Notre Dame worked with Brandon Wimbush over and over and over again, and, and then they tried went to, to somebody, else. and then they went to somebody else. Like I think, uh, I you think had Thompson, nobody else. I think you're going to see Thompson in this game for Mississippi State. I, mm, I think that no. they will take out Fitzgerald. The, no, no way, they, no way on earth. State fans worship that guy. Uh, that's fine. They can worship him. Like if he's losing, so, but Mike like, Lombardi I, I, taught me one thing: some teams. Are one bad injury away from being really good. I know you've talked about this quite a bit. I, I the be- last two I weeks. believe that there's no way on earth that Moorhead comes in and takes out the Golden Boy at Mississippi State. In, in his last season, and what I mean, he did suspend him for the first game. That was against Stephen F. Austin, though. But I, I'll tell you this: uh, uh, Thompson had like seven touchdowns in that game. Yeah, he looked. I mean, it's, it's he, Stephen he F. had Austin. more. He had more passing touchdowns in that game than Fitzgerald has had in the last three. Yeah, that's insane. Uh. Tell me this: Is, is, is there State going to play up? Is there anybody for Felipe Franks to bench for? Like who's em- behind him? Emory Jones is a freshman. Eh, like probably I mean, I, not. I, uh, Kyle uh, Trask. How has like, Florida be, gotten to this point where they don't even have anybody on the? I mean, that's like worse than LSU quarterback situation. It's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Uh, I I mean, if if Franks is all you got. Like I mean, you, you got to find something else that you're good at, right? I guess that's a, and what were you gonna say? Uh, tell me, is State gonna play with too much emotion in this game? So I, I want it so bad to take Florida in my in my gambling picks, just because I thought I think this game's kind of even, and I think as much as they want to beat Dan, Dan wants to beat them, um, and uh, I just couldn't pull the trigger on Florida because I think this is gonna be really emotional for State. They're gonna I guess want it, but my brain keeps going back. All, if I had to pick, I'm picking Florida, just because hoping, wanting, not a game plan. Yes, I, not I a agree. game plan. And at some point in time, I don't know that you're over a touchdown better than I than Florida. I don't think they are. I I think I would roll with Florida here. Uh, over under fifty one. Uh, I think I'd go under. I think I'd probably go under. I yeah, think I think under. I think both are. I do going think to Mississippi play. State's defense is real good. Like yes. I agree with you. In the in the conversation with the top three or four in the SEC, good. Yes, I, I do agree with that. Uh, let's move on. We'll try and roll through uh, a little quicker, speed okay, things yeah. up. 
West Virginia minus four at Texas Tech. Now, you and I had talked about BYU and Washington being one of our, our big five games, but it's hard to find five games when some of them aren't real good. Yeah, that BYU Washington is good. And that'll be in our that'll be in our honorable mention. It's a ranked matchup. Um but it, it means nothing for conference races. It means nothing for anything, really. Uh, and it's a bigger line. West Virginia, their first road trip. Texas Tech has looked really good. The over-under is 77. It is at 11 a.m. Saturday. You know call that neutral site game they played against Tennessee a, a road trip? No. Neutral site. Neutral site. And so, it, I mean, there were as many, well, there were more Tennessee fans, but by the second half not, they, they not, just not as, so much <laughs> not so much uh it's 11 a.m saturday espn 2 it's at jones at&t stadium in lubbock texas early game in Lubbock. early game sleepy lubbock texas uh texas tech comes in off a huge win at oklahoma state 41 to 17 last week west virginia absolutely beat the brakes off of kansas state 35 to 6 west virginia averages 42.3 points per game tech averages 52 points per game uh, there's not a lot of difference between these two. It's it's high powered offenses. They're not known for their defense, but both defenses have looked pretty good uh, so far this season. Freshman Alan Bowman for Texas and Will Greer for West Virginia are two of the nation's top three passers. Both are over seventy percent completion percentage. Both averaging over three hundred seventy yards per game. They this will be a quarterback bot, uh, battle, and man, I'm telling you, like this will be in my gambling picks. By the way, who? Who are you giving the coaching edge to? I mean, is it really an edge if I don't really like either one of them? Oh, golly, really? I I mean, I, I don't – I think offensively both are really good. Like, I, I've never had a problem with Cliff Kingsbury's offense. I've never had a problem with it. I'm, I actually like Dana Holgers. I like Dana. I don't – I can't like, believe I think, you don't I, like either one of them. I think Dan, I don't think both – I don't think either of them are, like, uh, uh, schematically – amazing right like i don't think dana holgerson is gonna beat you coaching like Ooh, I, I don't know about that i think he's a good coach man that shocks me how did i not know that about you i have no idea well we had gary really talked hates about dana West i don't That's hate crazy. dana holgerson that God. Is awesome i don't hate dana holgerson i didn't, I didn't know that dana That's holgerson amazing. i think would be a guy that i could really sit down and have Tweet a beer that with. out later <laughs> yeah but everybody could <laughs> I, I'll t- so I'm going to pick. It's not one of my gambling picks that I'm going to get. The out over under 77. Seven. By the way, that may not be enough points here. Oh, but I, the fact you know, that it's I 11 a.m. Sca- I get scared. To, yeah, these early morning games scare me to bet those big overs. Um, and there's no way on earth I could put honest money on the under. I just stay away. I'm going to be betting this game. It's not one of my gambling picks. I'm giving out. I'm betting West Virginia on the road. I don't like taking you know ho- going against home dogs, but. I like Dana Holgerson a lot. I like Will Greer a lot. That Will dude, Greer is fantastic. That dude is just a stud. He I is. I mean, he it, is. He's but got, this this entire team is one injury away, not from being really good, from one being, injury away from a disaster. You're right, but you know, there's probably a lot of teams like that. I yeah. mean, there aren't a whole lot of Georgias and Alabamas out there, Gary. That's true. That's true. How bad is Florida just hating life when they see like? Will Greer in the Greer. Heisman conversation. Uh, I mean, that was your yeah, guy. That was your guy, and, and Jim McElwain told him, like, no, nah, you're good, you can go. We Felipe Franks is going to take your job, sir. That's the most ridiculous. I, I don't even know how to. We'll move on from there. Number Game number five, South Carolina at Kentucky. It may not be a huge national game, but in the SEC, this it's is a massive us. game. Uh, Kentucky is a one-and-a-half point favorite. I think they're a one-point favorite now at Samstown. Over under is fifty and a half. Six thirty p.m. Saturday, SEC Network at Kroger Field in Lexington, Kentucky. Kentucky has won four straight in this series. They are on fire right now. Mark Stoops has got this thing rolling. Kentucky's averaging two hundred sixty nine rushing yards per game, six point two yards per carry. South Carolina, even with only getting fifty something rushing yards against Georgia, they're averaging one hundred ninety six rushing yards per game and five point six yards per carry. Uh, South Carolina averages 279 passing yards per game. Are they going to be able to stretch the field against Kentucky? That is the question. Like, the person that's going to have to play well in this game for them to win will be Jake Bentley. And he Debo. is the most important. Like, and, and, and Debo. Debo. Yeah, Debo's no, but, 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 Like, literally, they, they're they one of those teams. They're, they're one injury away from being a disaster. Yeah. But in that situation, though, if, if Debo Samuels is, is healthy, and Jake Bentley is upright. I think 
they can absolutely stretch the field and take some pressure off of the the front seven. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And and they are going to need to do it because Kentucky's line has been dominant. The, yeah. You're going to have to get the ball out quick against these dudes. Uh, I I kind of lean South Carolina here, but I think that I'm incredibly biased. I'm not going to bet this one. Well, I'm, um, this is a gambling pick of mine. Okay, well, leave but it alone. But it's but it's but it's all heart, little brain, little little brain, I'm little brain. With, I'm going with my guy. Let's talk some honorable mentions. We'll go on through the uh, the Thursday and Friday games. North Carolina at Miami. Miami is a 19 point favorite on Thursday night, 7 p.m. ESPN. Metrics have that lined up about right. 19 points. Uh, look, Miami. Other than the LSU game, like they've been giving up 80 yards rushing a game. Uh, they should stomp North Carolina. Friday night. Memphis minus 14 at Tulane, 7 p.m. ESPN 2. My metrics have this as, like, it should be about a 10-point line, not 14. There's no way I'd be betting Memphis. The way they looked on the road at Navy scares me on is this team going to travel well. Well, the, the issue is at Navy it was raining, and it's supposed to be really nice in New Orleans on Friday night. So It could be the rain. It could be they're not a good road team. It could I be. I don't know. Like, I, I would stay away from it, but... You know, the metrics do say Tulane. Bet Tulane. Yeah, it, it does say bet Tulane. Um, but last year it said bet Tulane because the, the metrics said like six points different from That's the right. spread, and Memphis blew them out of the water. Uh, Friday night again, UCLA at Colorado. Colorado, a 10.5-point favorite. That is at 8 p.m. on Fox Sports 1, FS1, whatever they call it now. Uh, Chip Kelly's team just looks confused and I can't, awful. I can't figure out some of these first year coaches uh, back. but but I will say this 10 and a half looks like a lot for Colorado like they That's they don't right. score a lot anyway should, should they be 10 and a half point favorites to anybody I don't know I'd probably I'd probably stay away from that one um let's talk about uh other honorable mentions BYU at Washington Washington's an 18 point favorite if BYU wins this game they have to get credit for going on the road playing all these big boy teams they went into Wisconsin, they're going into Washington. They're playing anybody who will take them on. Yeah, they're scared of no one. You are correct. Uh, another interesting game: Oregon minus three and a half at Cal. Oregon coming off that heartbreaking loss. Uh, this nine thirty p.m. on FS1 Saturday night. Iowa State at TCU minus ten and a half. Metrics say to bet Iowa State. This yeah, should be about a seven that, point that line. Shouldn't be that big of a number. Uh, that's six p.m. ESPNU Saturday again. Six p.m. on ESPN two. Virginia Tech at Duke. Duke is a six-point favorite. Boy, people jumped off that West, or that Virginia Tech bandwagon quick, didn't they? Yeah, it's Josh Jackson going down really changed them. That yeah. is in my gambling picks. Uh, Ole Miss at LSU. LSU is an 11.5-point uh, uh, favorite. They opened up 13.5. It is now 11.5 at Samstown. That's 8.15 p.m. on ESPN. And one of my favorite and a, a gambling pick of mine, Army at Buffalo is actually pretty interesting. It's 11 a.m. CBS Sports Network. Buffalo absolutely ran roughshod through Rutgers last week. Uh, they are like the G5 darlings right now. They're undefeated. Army, close loss at Oklahoma last week, 28-21 in overtime. Lots of uh, lots of fun football this weekend. Army at Buffalo. That's, hey, I'm going to be watching Pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> this, no, it's CBS that Sports is, Network. That is this made week. for TV right Believe there. that. All right, that is our college football big game previews for week five. You can bet on any of these games at any of the sports books down in Tunica. Go check them out, tunica.com, tunicatravel.com. Good gracious. And you can get our picks over at winningcureseverything.com. 